Hey, welcome back to another installment of 20 Credit Playthrough. Today's game is a game from a multi-game arcade cabinet called Three Wonders. Three Wonders held a game called Midnight Wanderers, Chariot, which is a shooter, and a game called Don't Pull. Today we're only going to be looking at Midnight Wanderers. And just like the last video that I did with the Punisher, we're actually going to break the stage is down and create uh, separate episodes off of them. So it looks like our main character Lou here is a bounty hunter. Um, he just took on the, the job because he needed some excitement. As you saw in the beginning storyline, that doesn't really tell you a whole lot. I mean, whatever the frog is saying is nonsensical garbage, but who cares? It's a really fun run and gun. The graphics are great as per usual for Capcom during this generation. I have no complaints. Another thing I really love about this game is the action. This action is super fluid and fun. This reminds me a lot of the fluidity of Metal Slug. And Metal Slug, as you may know from this channel, is definitely one of my favorite run and gun series. However, this mixes it up a little bit with a little bit of Strider thrown in and also a little bit of Gunstar Heroes. It's not quite as frantic as Gunstar Heroes, but it's frantic in its own right. This game does support the two players simultaneous. However, the second player, he just doesn't get a whole lot of credit. What I mean is Lou, the character that we're seeing right now, he shows up in Marvel vs. Capcom as an assist trophy. The other character does not. And Lou also has a little assist trophy, uh, or his own little like sidekick, called Firestorm, which we just saw, it was that purple flame. And he's even in Marvel vs. Capcom. Uh, Lou also was kind of featured in Cannon Spike, although the name was changed. And for those of you uninitiated, Cannon Spike was like a top-down run and gunner available for the Dreamcast and in arcades. One day I hope to cover that one. Another thing that is very Capcom-esque about this game is that it shares a little bit of DNA with uh, Ghosts and Goblins and Ghouls and Ghosts. I mean, not only are you shooting projectiles, which in you know those games you were actually throwing projectiles, but in this one, if you get hit, it looks like you lose an article of your clothing. And I know it sounds stupid, but that helps you figure out exactly how many more hits you can take, which is exactly one. So that means you can take two hits. However, in the levels, you'll pick up an item that will allow you to get reclothed, so you can take another hit again. So here we are at the first, or at the area one. Or a stage one, area one boss. This guy is pretty much a pushover. Yeah, I just got hit right now. However, his pattern's pretty easy. He just drops these like uh, spikes from his branches. They'll come tumbling down, but you can shoot them out of the way. On top of that, he just shoots some projectiles out, which are easy to dodge. Go over there and collect all the cards. Now, I'm not going to lie, I really don't know what those cards do, but I collect them regardless. I'm pretty sure they have something to do with the power-up system, but I could be wrong. Of course, the coins are only there for points. Eh, first continue. For anyone that knows uh, from the 20 credit reviews and the 20 credit playthroughs, when we play any game on these series, even though 20 credit playthrough has just recently changed, the one rule that has not changed, however, is that you we have to make it through the entire game on 20 credits. And you might be wondering why I chose 20 credits. The reason I chose that is because when I was younger, if I uh, were to play in the arcade, I would usually get an allowance to play in the arcade of about $5. Most arcade games back then were one quarter, so if one quarter equals 20 quarters, which would be a credit. Of course, as time went on, more games started doing two quarters as one credit. And then even later than that, 
most games, especially now, uh, do one dollar as one credit, and I've even seen two dollars as one credit. But since this is a retro channel for the most part, I'm gonna keep it at one quarter equals one credit, or one token. So thus, 20 credits. All right, I'll stop talking about that now. In this game, you do have to keep moving on. If you don't, the characters will just keep respawning. So you don't want to stay still, or you're just going to keep facing the same characters over and over. Ooh, laughing guys. I wasn't even getting hit. What were they laughing at? I mean, not that me getting hit is funny, but... Whatever. So we, we came across the first stage boss now. Not an area boss. And this guy, just like the area boss, has a pretty simple pattern. Fortunately, the way it's set up is that you can uh, travel between the two levels of this area here. So you can go on the upper level or the lower level easily. Lou, if you jump up... Now, it showed him just going right through the, the level, but... Most of the time, he'll hang on to the ledge, and then you can push up, and then that'll propel him up. And of course, you can press down and down and jump, and he'll go down a level. You also don't want to stand right above this creature, because if you do, he's going to scratch at the surface, he's going to hit you. And also, don't do what I just did. Fortunately, though, it looked like you only had one hit to go, so as soon as it came back, I fired off a bunch of projectiles on my return and killed him. I'm sorry. Defeated him. Alright, well, it looks like that ends stage one, so we'll leave you with a cutscene.